Hey everyone, welcome to the IGDA Philadelphia Annual Town Hall. I'm Adrian Sandoval and I am the chair for our Philadelphia chapter. Today we're going to be talking about the progress we made over the year 2020, as well as talk about our plans for 2021, including an update on the upcoming Philly Makes Games website initiative we discussed at last year's town hall. From all of us here at the board of IGDA Philly, we want to thank you all for joining us today. For those of you unaware, the International Game Developers Association, or IGDA, is the largest nonprofit membership organization in the world serving individual game developers. We are a 501c6 organization based in the United States, but we advocate for developers all over the world, regardless of their position, from artists and programmers to business people, lawyers, QA, etc. If you're interested in learning more about IGDA as an organization or are interested in becoming a member, please visit their website at www.igda.org. It is our mission to support and empower game developers around the world in achieving fulfilling and sustainable careers. The organization does this by providing research, resources, and discussions that enrich game developers' skills, as well as connecting game developers around the world with networks and resources, either within person gatherings or digital spaces, such as the newly launched IGDA Discord. Here in Philadelphia, our goal is to help connect our rapidly growing game development community to these global resources, as well as provide our own, both for the sake of community growth, as well as to promote our community's games and talent to the wider game development network outside of the city. We also provide our community with local networking opportunities and monthly content to strive to ensure all of our events are a diverse, safe space where developers from all walks can feel comfortable expressing themselves and engaging with our community. As providing that safe space is an important part of our mission, we do have a code of conduct. The full text can be found at our website, but in short, we ask that all of our members and guests to please respect the people around you, to treat everyone with kindness in all of your interactions, and that all criticism is constructive, and to carry those values forward, whether we are meeting in person, digitally via Zoom, such as today's meeting, or on our digital community hub, such as our Discord server. If you ever run into any issues or violations of our code of conduct, you may email the board at our email address on the, on the site, but I'll read it, igdaphilly at gmail.com. And be sure to follow us on social media for updates on any of these topics that we discussed tonight, as well as information on our upcoming monthly meetings. We post our events along with Zoom registration links on both our Facebook page and our Twitter feed. And our website is now hosted by IGDA National, and, you can be, and it can be found over at philly.igda.org. You can find our Google Calendar with information on game development events happening locally, whether they're hosted by us, our friends at Philly Game Mechanics, or otherwise. We also have a steadily growing YouTube channel where we've been posting our monthly content online for review lately. More on that later in the presentation. And we've also been running our own local Discord, apart from the IGDA National Discord, that doesn't require an IGDA membership. For access to this Discord, just send an email over to igdaphilly at gmail.com and we'll get you an invite link as soon as possible. Now, before we get started with the town hall proper, we have a couple of brief announcements. Our friends at Philly Game Mechanics are hosting the annual Global Game John, the specifically Philly flavored Global Game Jam site. For those unaware, a game jam is an event where participants are given a short period of time to develop a game based on a secret theme that is provided at the beginning of the event. The Global Game Jam, which is a separate organization, is the biggest coordinated game jam with communities all over the globe participating. Now, normally the event is in person and it's over a 48 hour period, though this year due to the current pandemic, the Global Game Jam will be a four day event held remotely. In order to participate, you have to register an account over at globalgamejam.org and register at the Philadelphia location. Uh, we also encourage anyone looking to join the jam to go to phillygamemechanics.com and join their Discord community to find others who are participating in the jam and for support and finding a team for that jam. Secondly, IGDA National will be sending out a member satisfaction survey soon. This is an initial part of their goal to improve member satisfaction for the year of 2021 into 2022. The survey is currently being finalized, but once it is, we'll be sharing the link this week on our Discord server. Uh, if you're looking again to join our Discord, you just send that email over to IGDAphilly at Gmail, and we'll send you the link. 
we'd really like to get as many of our members to fill out the survey uh, as possible. So please be sure to fill it out when it gets posted so that your voice can be heard and so that our chapter is well represented in the responses. All right, to kick off today's town hall, I'd like to review last year's goals, and then we'll do a short recap of last year's events. We'll talk about what we were able to accomplish from our goals, what we could have done better. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at our plans and restated goals for the next year. So last year, we wanted to not just continue our commitment to providing new content every month, but to expand upon that content. Our goal was to host more roundtable events, workshops, and similar content that encourage community participation and interfacing to both encourage skills development and provide new and interesting networking opportunities for our community. We wanted to increase our presence and promotion both at local events such as Too Many Games and Philly Tech Week and conventions such as MAGFest or the Game Developers Conference. We wanted to continue our outreach by expanding our social media presence. Uh, this included not just additional content on our active Facebook and Twitter pages, but building a new presence on other social medias and content delivery networks such as our YouTube page and our website. We wanted to begin development of the Philly Makes Games website, which was originally envisioned as a site for the archival of the game development history of Philadelphia in order to better promote the games that are being currently developed in the city as well as its past. And finally, we wanted to increase our effort in sharing and promoting our community's games, making them a featured part of our social media presence as much as our own content. A big part of our chapter's mission is to spread awareness of our community to the larger IGDA global network, and this is and continues to be an important part of our mission. Those were the goals last year. Let's talk about how well we were able to accomplish those goals. And to begin, we need to address the elephant in the room regarding the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So back in February, prior to the proliferation of the virus, we began the year with our initiative far, with far more interactive content with a roundtable discussing and participating running game jams. This was following on the heels of 2020's Global Game Jam, and it was kicked off with an introduction by Flyclops co-founder and Philly Game Mechanics Game Jam maestro Jake O'Brien. We were extremely pleased with the amazing turnout and the very spirited, very positive conversation. It was a very positive start and it made us feel like we got to hit the ground running for a very productive and successful 2020. Of course, the following month, it became increasingly clear that COVID-19 was a serious and growing concern, not just to our local community, but nationwide as well. As such, we had made the decision to host our March panel on networking during shows and uh, about networking during shows and conventions prior to the inevitable citywide lockdown that shortly followed after the meeting. This decision to host the meeting via Zoom, <laughs> see you, Rob. This decision to host the meeting via Zoom did have some uncertainty for us as board members. We had no idea how well this was going to turn out or how people would respond to digitally hosted content. Fortunately, our fears were unfounded. Though not quite as big as our previous roundtable, this event had decent turnout and being mostly focused on community discussion and Q&A with our board members and Dave Mortarana, the other co-founder of Phyclops, we also had a very lively, very productive discussion. Moreover, this event would be the staging ground to help us prepare for digital content throughout the rest of the year. For example, we continue to line up great speakers from our community to talk about their games, share the lessons that they learned uh, throughout the development of those projects. This included talks from folks such as Jonathan Culp, who is the lead engineer at Servo Studios, discussing the technical challenges developing their mobile RPG guildlings. We had Dan Furnacy, who discussed the development history, success, and the future of fighting game smash hit indie darling Rivals of Aether and Andrew Aversa of Impact Gameworks sharing his business and marketing tips following the release of their RPG Tangle Deep. We also got to hear from Steve Mazio, who discussed the relationship between narrative and randomness in RPG game design. Many of the topics this year, from programming to business and marketing, were topics that were unique specifically to this year and helped fill some of those requests we had received from our community for topics that they thought would be helpful for their knowledge and development. And we're very grateful for all of the, spe uh, the speakers this year for giving us their time and expertise. Now, the pandemic put a halt to our plans for participatory events, such as the workshops, as well as other community-focused events, such as the yearly picnic that we do. But we did find other events to help engage our community digitally, which were a resounding success. 
In June, we hosted our first community game showcase where a dozen of talented and amazing developers from the Philadelphia area signed up and shared either in development or a previously released projects. We also hosted a panel focused uh, squarely on community management, which is a relatively new and growing field in game development with four of the biggest names in the field from our community, including Sal Cottrell of Nerd Street Gamers and Black Card members, George Rogers of Rivals of Aether, Julian Castillo of Two Awesome Game Studio, and Jay Goldberg of Certain Affinity. It was an absolutely amazing panel that was bursting to the brim of useful information for growing our games community. And I can't thank those panelists enough for their time and participation. And for December, we once again hosted and emceed the annual Camden County College Student Game Showcase, where students of the college's game design development program shared their games that they made as part of the program. Their students and the program's professor, Ryan Morrison, are amazing members of our community. We're always happy and grateful to share their work and host the event and hope to continue to do so in the future. Moving on to discuss our social media presence. We've been putting a lot of effort into the archival of our presentations, both past and present, uh, present in, with our web outlets, such as the IGDA Philly YouTube channel. This has always been an initiative for our chapter. However, we've always been limited to the available technology we have at our disposal. So one of the unforeseen benefits of moving our content to Zoom is that we now have the ability to easily record our content and get it on our YouTube channel with relative ease. So as such, the content we've mentioned at today's meeting uh, is already available on our YouTube channel, and we plan on continuing to put each month's content up not long after the hosted event, including tonight's town hall. We have some past events that have yet to be posted that we're in the process of getting up soon, so we encourage everyone listen, uh, listening who hasn't yet done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell, be notified when new content is posted. If you're unable to make meetings at their designated times, it's a great way to access our content. Uh, in the future, we're also looking forward to hosting some of our events on IGDA National's Twitch channel as well. So our content and our community can be seen by the wider IGDA global network. So be sure to keep an ear out for when that happens. Regarding our pledge to share and promote local games and projects, uh, this is something we have begun doing in earnest using our social media channels, particularly our Twitter page, where we have shared community games, projects, and events with some regularity. Now we are a volunteer, now on that note, we are a volunteer organization and our board has limited time and resources. In order for us to catch more projects and to more easily fulfill our promise to share and promote community content and games, we encourage everyone when sharing your games on social media to use the hashtag Philly Makes Games, which we regularly check when we're looking for new games and content to share. It's important to note, this hashtag is a community tag. And it's not officially affiliated with IGDA Philadelphia. That being said, it is watched and used by our board, our community, and the Philly game mechanics as well. And it is a great way for local developers to find and support each other. Uh, support each other. If you're not already using the hashtag, please consider it as it will definitely help get your community's attention and support. Again, last year, we officially announced our plans to move forward with the Philly Makes Games website. Tonight, I wanna share some of our progress on that page when it's coming, and what to expect from what we're calling the soft launch. Early in the year, our board discussed how to make the site a reality given our limited time and resources. What we settled upon was to reduce the initial scope of cataloging and tracking the entire history of game development here in Philadelphia by putting our focus on currently active studios and their games, creating essentially a who's who list of game development in the area that is community focused and controlled as opposed to outside resources such as game dev maps. We also agreed that the easiest way to achieve that goal, given that none of us who are working on the site are professional web developers, and that we wanted our content creation to be accessible to the larger community, was using wiki software. So we put our efforts into setting up a domain and wiki page for our community, which we are currently working on adding extensions so all expected features are available at launch, as well as creating our first draft of a readable format that will contain information about various studios and their past and current game projects. We're not ready to announce a release date just yet, but we expect to have a soft launch of the site relatively soon. We already have content that has been approved by major studios in the area that will be up at launch. 
Additionally, we're currently opting for content. Uh, we're currently opting for content on the site to be curated, as we lack the resources to moderate the site 24/7. So the site will have the ability for users to submit content for us to review and put up when it launches. Thus, when we are ready to launch, we will be encouraging developers and studios from our community to please submit as much content as possible so that the site can thrive and everyone will have an easy at a glance resource for all active studios and projects in the area. To summarize, we'll be launching the Philly Makes Games Wiki relatively soon with content ready to go and then the ability for users to submit content for review. Our short term goal is to get as much content early from individual developers and studios of any size possible. For clarity, content we're looking for to host should be from the Philadelphia game community, which includes content from the Philadelphia region and our neighbors in Southern New Jersey and Delaware. In the future, as the site grows and it becomes more readily feasible, we'd like to expand the content to include an archive of the history of game development past, present, and future throughout Philadelphia as part of our chapter's continued goal of promoting and showcasing the city's game development community to a larger global network. Part of that effort will be viewable from the site at launch as we intend to include past and present games developed during community organized game jams. This effort is in part thanks to Philly Game Mechanics who have done a wonderful job archiving and sharing their community's jams and are providing content for us to include on the web page at launch as well. We plan to continue updating this page with future game jams as, uh, games as well, uh, as these games are just as much of a part of our community's heritage and history as major studio releases and will someday grow the page to include historical information on previous studios and games as well. Ultimately, we see both the upcoming iteration of Philly Makes Games website and its future expansion as a template for other local communities to see and create their own database. Although the Philly Makes Games site will at present be owned and operated by the board of the IGDA Philadelphia, we view this site as being a local community effort, and we hope that its growth and expansion will, uh, will inspire and be of use of other communities looking to provide useful information for their members to showcase their games and studios to a larger global network and to archive their unique game development history and heritage for future members of their community and game development as a whole. All right, so to cap off tonight's town hall, I'd like to discuss our goals and plans for the year of 2021. Of course, our plans to launch the Philly Makes Game site and to add more content to it throughout the year, which we've just previously discussed. We also plan to continue our monthly content, and the good news is we already have the next couple of months filled out. We'll be sharing in more information about our meeting for February very soon, but we anticipate this year to be full of amazing content from our community, just like last year, including new topics we haven't covered before that have been requested from our community. We mentioned that we've been steadily adding to our YouTube page and are looking for uh, some of our meetings to be hosted on IGDA National Twitch stream. These are only a couple of the ways we're looking to expand our presence on social media, both locally and within the larger game community, game development community. So, of course, we want to continue to grow and expand on that front. Phillies Makes Games is not just a rallying call for our community. We want it to continue to grow and expand outside of our own network. So the game development community at large sees all of the great things that are coming out of the city and its neighboring areas. That being said, we always want to hear your feedback on content that you'd like to see from IGDA Philadelphia. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A in just a second, but if you have any requests for topics, you would like to know more uh, uh, from art, production, technical side of games, any other area of game development that you want to know more about and would like to hear someone talk about uh, from, our, uh, from our community or elsewhere, never be afraid to email us, tag us on Twitter, ask us on the IGDA Philly Discord. However you want to get in touch with us, we want to hear your suggestions. We want to try to figure out the best way to act upon them. IGDA Philadelphia is all about providing meaningful content and resources for our membership. And the best way to be able to provide that is to hear from you and to make that a part of our plans. So you're all absolutely encouraged to reach out to us. And while our digital meetings have largely been a success and have made some aspects of providing content easier, such again as quickly expanding our YouTube page, of course, we'd love to meet in person again. We want to continue our pledge from the beginning of last year for more participatory content, and we want to be able to increase our presence at events, again, uh, events, again such as GDC or, or whatever other conventions happen in the future, too many games. 
while the future is currently looking bright with the current dispersal of COVID-19 vaccines, there are still a lot of questions surrounding how quickly the vaccine will reach the general populace and what the spread of the virus will look like in the next coming months. So as to when our next in-person meeting is going to be and what shape it's going to take, that's more or less impossible to predict at this moment. But we want to ensure all of you that when and only when it is safe to meet, we will hold in-person community meetings and networking opportunities again. That does not mean that digital meetings will disappear entirely, however. They definitely have unique benefits, and it's something that we would like to continue investing in uh, even after it's safe to meet in person. So that's it. That's all I have in terms of announcements, in terms of our plans and goals for next year. Uh, I would love to hear any questions that you might have. We have um, a Q&A button, which you can see in the bottom of your Zoom if you would like to ask there uh, and queue up some questions. You can also use the chat if that is faster for uh, if that is faster for you. I've got my eyes on it. Uh, does anyone have any questions about what our about any of the plans that we have? Do you have any requests that you would like to see? Um, I like to hear, uh, so this is the Q&A portion, and this is open to everybody on the board who is all available right here with me as well. Nice job, Adrian. Thank you. I'm going to take this chance to look at the chat too. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> what kind of, uh, have we set boundaries? I'm asking this knowing whether we have or not. Have we set boundaries or like what kind of studios can submit to Philly Makes Games? What, that's a good question. Um, and again, we want to try and get as much content as possible. So this is not just open to major studios, indie studios. Of We want to hear from the indie studios in the area. We want to hear from, we want to hear about student games that are being made. Uh, I think in the future, I have plans as one of the teachers in this area to uh, make it part of the assignment, maybe to even add your, Talk about, you know, if you have groups working on your game, you should talk about your game and add it to the website. Even if it's not part of the assignment, definitely a good extra credit thing for them to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah I mean, ultimately the goal is to get as much of the history of Philadelphia tracked as possible. So, and the only way that we're going to be able to do that if we want to include past student games is to get as many present student games as possible too. And that goes for indie studios, that goes for, for major um, studios as well. So yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that aspect of being able to um, list the student games as well as the indies and commercial studios because I, th I think that really starts to then show just how much how much activity is in this community, um, the volume of it, and it will everything will be tagged and sorted and all that, right? I mean, that's the beauty of the wiki platform is that if you're only interested in looking at commercially published titles or what have you if you only want to see jamestown and soul and um you know things like that then uh, you can filter by that but yep. you can also see the vast vast ocean of student games that are produced at all the different programs in the area so that's exciting mm -hmm. absolutely What questions do people have? Anybody have questions? Otherwise, I have another thing. We were talking just before we started about Twitter and lists, um, talking about promoting yeah. stuff. So I'm uh, going somebody... to... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say uh, really quickly that, again, if you want to queue up your questions using the Q&A function on Zoom uh, buttons down the corner, uh, you can also uh, throw them in the chat. So while we are getting... So just in case people have questions, why don't you go ahead, Rob, and then uh, we'll take a look at it once... Uh... Yeah. Um, so... Does anybody use Twitter lists? I think a few people do. Um, and I was reminded that I've made Twitter lists in the past because recently a few people have subscribed to a Twitter list that I made. Um, and it's like, oh yeah, I made that list. Yeah, that's a useful list. It's actually a column in my tweet deck and I completely have forgotten about it. I mean, I see the column, but I'd sort of forgotten about it as a thing, that the list was a thing that could be shared. Um, but when we started, when we first started talking about the Philly Makes Games initiative, I decided I'd make a Philly Makes Games list, and so I would. I did an initial flurry ad of everybody that at the time I thought of while I was on Twitter of, oh, they're a game maker in 
you know, or it's a student team or local company or whatever. Um, so now that I've been recently reminded that I did this thing, um, I want to rebuild it uh, underneath the IGDA Philly Twitter account and really put that to use and help promote that. So um, if you're a voice in game development, student or professional, I think that'll be a really neat thing to be on that list. And then we will promote that list. Um, Cause one of the recent people who subscribed to it is a former Philly dev who is not in Philly anymore. Um, so it's a way for people who have our diaspora who have gone out to stay in touch with the community. So it was, a, I was, I'm excited about this, the whole Philly makes game thing. Um, you know, like what Tronster is, is putting in there. Thank you for that. It's that's, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Hartley, Ms. Hartley, I don't know, um, that uh, I think it's the best. It's 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 an exciting thing that we're doing. I'm really excited for it's to see the, the wiki thing to come together. So uh, any day now, we'll make it live or any month now. Yeah, so... If you'd like to make it happen, faster, we're looking for volunteers. Yes, we are. Absolutely. Yeah, we are absolutely looking for volunteers. Uh, there's again, there's only so much we can do. Uh, I will say that, like, again, even like for our social media and being able to scour and make sure that I'm catching what I can see with that's why using the Philly makes games hashtag is really important. Why? Um, and maybe even also joining the, the list that's associated with it as well so that you can you can be added and see all of the developers who are in the area really quickly. Uh, one of the the few to, uh, one of the the few really good tools of Twitter is is doing that, um, but also yes, the whole website initiative is is really important to me. I've been really invested into this idea of what can um, what how can we better track the the history of games um, from a community stand from a community standpoint, right? And even in this early incarnation where we're mostly just catching what's what's currently going on um i think that's that's a really big thing especially because you know there are like philadelphia we say this a lot and for those who have not been to an igda meeting before first of all hi um but uh, something that comes up a lot um both here and other uh other um groups such as philly uh the philly game mechanics will talk about uh what we're doing outside of our community from other people that we meet in other cities and such and they'll be like I didn't know people made games in Philadelphia. It's it's such a common refrain. And I have a feeling that uh, Philadelphia is not alone in that. We have a very vibrant um, and active indie, uh, indie uh, community here um, with a lot more studios just cropping up all the time, uh, including big studios such as PHL Collective. Um, and I imagine that's that we're not alone in that. So one of the things that I'm really excited to get this idea off the ground, it's something that um, I've been thinking about for a long time now, but also I'm excited about like taking that and hopefully maybe that will catch on. Other communities can use that to help grow their community as well. Yeah, I love the idea of building it as a template that then hopefully other communities can sort of repeat, you know. So uh, assuming we don't mess it up and we make a good run of it, which, you know, I think we're off to a. I think uh, you know. I think we're off to a really good start. You know, Adrian, game history is a thing that you care a great deal about. You know, Karen has been making games in one form or another for, I don't know, fifty, sixty years. I mean, you've been around for a while. Um, you know, so you know, I'm, I'm the weirdo in the group. You guys, you know, and jason's working at the, the the largest studio in 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 town and they're producing stuff they can't talk about all the time but you know uh <laughs> though that's something you know i think that's something that the social media side i think you know when a company is working on something that they can't talk about you can still talk about that you're working on a project there's some level of thing you can do you know sometimes you got to be absolutely no i can neither for confirm nor deny that this thing exists but i think it's important just to spread the message that there are studios even if they can't say what it is or where it's headed let's talk about the fact that it exists that there's a there are studios here working on these things and whether it's you know um, you know, I subscribe to Bernard Suit's definition of game, you know, the voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles, just approaching things with a losery attitude, not a loser's attitude, a losery <laughs> attitude. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, I know Tom uh, is, is here tonight, you know, from 
beautiful games like Soul um, that are sort of these sort of Zen experiences, but also you know the the practical things that and some of the weird experimental things that some of the stuff is you know it's under your hat right now and we can't talk about it. But you know there's um, I think all of that still should be talked about even if you can't put a label on it or a name on it because I think it's we are like so many other communities. Nobody thinks that we make games. I th I think the first time I heard it this idea of the Philly makes games hashtag or whatever sort of came to my mind. I did not invent this thing whatsoever, but it, the first point where this concept sort of hit me was, I think it was Steve Pettit talking about taking Philly Tron up to a New York event or something like that. And somebody walked by and he was telling the story. It was like, Philadelphia makes games. It's like, F, yeah. <laughs> I did the F for you. Yeah, too. yeah. I'm but they didn't say F. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about this. And I think we should really aggressively go, you know, um, promote, even if it's something you can't talk about, we should talk about it as much as we can. Yep, agreed. And uh, I think... Yeah, we're gonna have another really great resource for being able uh, for being able to do that. And uh, yeah, really excited about it. It's been great to hear uh, so many other people being excited about it. I know Philly Game Mechanics is is really excited about it as well. So it's been great. All right. Uh, so it doesn't look like there are any questions. We have any other comments uh, from uh, or anything else that the board would like to add? I felt like you were going to say something, Rob, and then <laughs> I mean, I'm always about to say something. If, <laughs> if, if, if you've been the victim of more than five minutes with me, you know I talk too much. Okay. Um, so, no, I kind of want to, you know, I see that some of the people are, are in the room are students um, that I recognize. Um, there's some names in there I don't recognize. Um, I kind of want to put the rest of the board on the spot and just tell a couple of like let's drop some names of things that have come out of philadelphia that people may not have heard of um you know small or large projects but i think just i think we should give them a little bit of a taste mm -hmm. of the history of philadelphia making games i think that would be a nice thing to sort of include here yep. um yeah there's we, okay whether we call it evening show or otherwise well, you, you already threw out a couple of, of names that some of the people in here might not be aware of, such as uh, Soul, which was developed by Gossamer Games, which is headed up by Tom Sharp, who is in the audience, as previously mentioned. Um, I'll also throw out throw the hat to uh, Cypher Prime, who recently released a game, and I'm blanking on the name now, which I feel... what What is it, Jason? I forgot the name as well. So. Oh, I thought you, I thought you just said it. All right. Um, but uh, yeah, Cypher Prime has been making games um, for in this community for years, including Pulse, which was one of the which is a beautiful rhythm game and one of the first games that released on the iPad when the iPad launched. Uh, they also released one of the first indie games on the PlayStation Network with Auditorium uh, that people might not have played. Uh, Rob, you also mentioned Jamestown, which came out of of Final Form. Final Form games, which are no longer operating, but was like a huge, huge hit uh, at the time. And I actually still have friends uh, from other uh, from other communities. Line wait, yes, there we go, from Cypher Prime. I still have friends who ask me about what happened to Final Form games from people outside of this community because they're all huge fans of Jamestown. Um, but Jamestown's really, really good shooter for anyone who hasn't played it. Um, I think I just took all of the high profile examples <laughs> well, there's there's high profile, but not necessarily Philadelphia anymore. But there's people like Greg Lavanoff who right. used went to Drexel and went on to make Wander Song and is working on Chicory, which is coming out. I think yep, maybe next great. year or this year. Yeah, both excellent. You know. Point Crypt. That was his game from uh, when he was still here. That was um, so. That's my obscure Lavanoff. Yeah. And that was actually released. <laughs> you know, one year this year. Mm -hmm. uh maddie oh, really? thorson Crazy. yeah and maddie thorson you know has ties to mm -hmm. the philly area and maddie thorson went on to do celeste and right. uh 
blanking on the name of the the the, the both thing the <laughs> towerfall uh towerfall. Yeah. yes yeah and other <laughs> projects so you know so philly has that connection you know even though they're not necessarily in philly anymore and they've gone right. off to other parts of the, the country. right but they came out of philly also dan fernacy would fall into that too with rivals faith or mm-hmm. yeah those are great examples i gotta stop you there I, it's it's ether it's a e ether it's ether not <laughs> ether i was gonna i was gonna tease you in the chat when you were saying it but i <laughs> I, I let it slide all right thank you i appreciate that now it's immortalized for all to see the recording um <laughs> uh, i see rob's posting you know fly clops in their very popular domino game you know And uh, it, and even though I, it's it's part of my DNA, I feel I would feel remiss if I did not mention um, uh, the games from Island Official uh, from Island Official Studios, such as uh, Hands On Tangrams for Nintendo DS, uh, Orion's Odyssey, which we did on DS Eyewear. Um, I feel like you know one I'm mentioning that not just because I worked on them, but also because Ryan Morrison uh, headed those projects, and um, again, you know big part of our community who really really helps us out um and is always grateful for us to to host um because he's also the um not the program director but one of the professors over at camden county college uh who we MC their event for so i feel i feel like i should also throw out that we did those games too for him <laughs> <laughs> which is south jersey but south jersey is as much as the philadelphia region as as any other we're, we're 20 minutes out I'm doing this presentation from South Jersey. So. <laughs> Jersey counts. Jersey counts. How can I can? How come every time I try to remember PHL Collective's domain, I get it wrong? Um, I can well, never we make sure it works. <laughs> and for those who don't know, PHL Collective is what is the current largest operating uh, game studio. Uh, has released um, set a couple of big games. Jason, I don't know if you want to talk about them since that's your. Well, some of those are before my time, but uh, like I know, like the two that I'm the... thinking of are, are part of are you were part of. So yeah, uh, before my time, there was uh, Cluster Puck '99, which was released on Xbox and Switch, which is a multiplayer uh, hockey-ish, air hockey kind of multiplayer game. Uh, Games that I've been a part of have included uh, Ben 10. Uh, what was the name of that one? Uh, ben 10 Omnicharge was the VR game, which was, you know, released at a, with great timing at the Cartoon Network Hotel, uh, which <laughs> is, I think, at some point it was op- has been open at time, you know, and is very empty. But I'm not sure if you can play VR games there. But you know, they still have the setup. Uh, last early, late last year, we released uh, both. Uh, ben 10 Power Trip, which is a multi-platform, uh, open-world Ben 10 light game, and we released Guzzi, which is a sort of shock jump horror mobile game, and that I think reached a total of million, uh, at least a million downloads if you combine both the iOS and Android stores. So that's awesome. Yep. And you, you joined them right after the We Bear Bears. After we bear bears, so I did not work on we bear bears. Yep. Our former, uh, our former uh, chair, Rachel Sima, worked on the we bear bears VR game. That was a writer, and and she was a writer and the an early producer on early Benton producer. Project. So, but right, she did right. the she wrote the script. So, so she yep. has her hands all over it. <laughs> and I got a Drexel this... for for that PHL collective is. Almost fifty percent Drexel grads. I don't know what you're actually talking about, right? Of of the of the founding partners, yeah. Of the founding partners, uh, three of them are Drexel grads. Two are Yorts grads, and and then it was Nick who came out of the AAA gaming industry. And this, so everything that we've been listing has been like the last, is only been the last couple of years, with some games stretching back as far as like ten to fifteen years into our history. which is just to say that Philadelphia has a long and storied history and it goes farther than that. Um, And it's just amazing that, you know, a lot of people don't know that and don't think of Philadelphia as a gaming hub, but it absolutely is. So 
yeah, again, like it's really good to, to know these things. And a lot of every pretty much everything that we've said tonight are going to be some of the things that are going to initially launch on the Philly Makes Game site. And then we'll, at some point we'll go backwards and we'll fill that those gaps in even more. Yeah, and it, it's I mean, it, it's you only have to scratch the surface for the for it to just grow exponentially, because once you get into, you know, Gossamer Games with Tom came out of Drexel's entrepreneurial games studio egs which is the incubator for student teams there and there are multiple studios that are in startup mode coming out of that group and you know i don't think they're the, re they're the only incubator um in the region and we've got a couple of publishers that have started up recently in the in in the region as well so there's a lot of activity that it's uh, it's exciting to be able to concentrate it into one platform yep. um so but I think some of it is, you know, you, you, um, Adrian and Karen are, you guys are taking the lead on figuring out how to structure all of this and put it all together. Um, our board member who's not here tonight, Phil, has been gathering data and things like that. But some of it is just, it's sort of data entry. And then, you know, um, I love the idea of Adrian, you using your game history classes at the, at the various places you teach um, to write entries and things like that for for different games i think that's going to be really really quite cool so get yeah, more into the actual like anyway. research it's process like too and game history research is becoming a a bigger bigger field which is beyond the scope of tonight's meeting but it's something that i think about quite a lot and something i'm going to be thinking about in regards to this website as well um and tom has put in the chat a link to egs student projects which is awesome absolutely awesome yeah, a lot of really cool stuff coming out uh, coming out there. And all of the schools uh, around here, too, which is going to be really cool is when we get this launch, we start to get more participation um, so we can get uh, grow that network. Yeah. <laughs> and Sean Pierre's game, uh, yeah, Fugue, came out on Steam. That's another release. Oh, uh, Fugue, yeah, <laughs> that's a good that's a good one. Um, Sean Pierre, cur uh, cur also, cur also currently teaching at Drexel um, and had his game come out on Steam. Hopefully we'll have another letter mobile game coming out soon and for those who don't know sean and, is the, you know. the i don't know what to call he doesn't like you if you call him like <laughs> leader or whatever but he kind of oversees philly right. game mechanics too so good name a uh, good name to know and yeah check out his game on steam Fug uh, fugue is how you pronounce it mm -hmm. yep good really fun all right anything else my fellow board members Whether a name you want to shout out to or anything uh, else you want to mention that I have not mentioned. I just want to reiterate that if anybody is making a game in the community, um, in the region, um, let us know about it so that we can start attaching that Philly Makes Games hashtag to it and helping to hopefully, you know, doing whatever we can to boost the signal. Um, I have to say... Um, sort of as a side thing, IGDA, I think we all looked at it and there were some points where it was like, where is this heading? Um, but it's been a really interesting um, developments in the last year or whatever um, with leadership and the things that they're doing behind the scenes and their main discord and that the activity that's on there. Um, and they're looking, you know, what you were already talking about earlier, Adrian, about taking maybe some of our content and restreaming it on their tw Twitch channel, but also um, boosting the signals of what we put up onto not just our own Discord, but the main headquarter right. Discord, our channel that we have there. They're looking to boost that, put that in the newsletter. So if people get us news, then we then can do what we can to boost it locally, but we can also then try to boost it up the food chain into headquarters because I think they're also being much better about engaging the local communities and finding ways to boost signals that way. So that's another reason that, you know, if you've got yep. news, please let us know. Yeah, please. And I'm, I'm going to actually do a really quick plug for the uh, for IGDA National. So all of our meetings are always um, are, are always free to anyone from the Philadelphia area who wants to join. Or if you're not from the Philadelphia area and you happen to be around, you're, you're free to come too, of course. Um, that, be, uh, that being said, the IGDA National is a dues-paying membership. And um, 
one of the things that they have been really, you know, Rob mentioned their Discord channel, and that is a, a fairly new initiative. It only happened this year, but it's one of the few things that I were to say, if someone were to ask me, like, why should I pay like the $60 a year or if you're $20 for a student to, jo uh, to join the IGDA, that Discord access, and I know it sounds, because like, you know, you join a, a Patreon for a dollar, you get Discord access, right? But this, like, immediately they open this server, and suddenly there are like, like thousands of game developers from all walks, including professional game developers who are on this thing. And there is a section for sharing your project. There is a section for asking questions. Like people who normally charge hundreds of dollars for consultation, you put a question on this Discord that you have and they welcome questions from from new people they want to see it they want that engagement on the discord people who would normally charge you hundreds of dollars for consultation will just see your question and like answer it on a coffee break um this discord has a ton of value right in there and again like they are they've been very active this year in talking with us and um wanting to promote our events and wanting to uh, and are being very super helpful so i do want to give a, a big shout out to them because they have been this year in particular right. they have been on the ball and uh, this Discord access, uh, this Discord access alone, I think, is is actually worth the membership. So yeah, again, igda.org, uh, check that uh, check that out. Um, again, you get what you put into it because you have to be an active member of that Discord, um, right? But again, like you can share your projects there. They also did a game showcase this year for igda uh, for igda members um, that yet again was like all like all walks were part of that showcase. So. Um, yeah, that was a that's a really cool thing. So, uh, definitely something to look into there. All right. Highly recommended. Yep. All right. So to close this off, I want to say from all of us here at IGDA Philadelphia, one more time, thank you so so much to our community who stuck with us during what was definitely a very tumultuous year. <laughs> Um, we again, we want to thank all of our presenters, all of our panelists and the studios who represent them, whether it was this year or in previous years who helped make all of our content, both very informative and entertaining for everyone who attended meetings live or watched it on our YouTube page. Uh, I want to say thanks to the Philly Game Mechanics, who have been absolutely wonderful about promoting our content, sharing their resources with us. Um, and everyone who, uh, and I also want to give a thanks to uh, the studios and Philly, and Philly Game Mechanics who have currently contributed to that upcoming Philly Makes Games website. Uh, personally speaking, I want to thank everyone on our board, without whom none of the accomplishments we have made this year would have been possible. Uh, to my vice chair, Jason, uh, Jason, to our secretary, Rob, to our treasurer, Karen, and our member at large, who is unfortunately not here today, Phil, uh, all of whom have been absolutely vital to reaching out, securing those wonderful speakers and panelists we had this year, uh, helping me set up and get content ready for Philly Makes Games, promoting our events on social media. Again, all of this would not be possible without their efforts and dedication, uh, and dedication to this organization. I am extremely excited to work with them this year and to continue building, continue growing our chapter over the course of the year. And again, thank you all for who are watching this presentation right now. All of us are grateful to you for your continued support to our chapter. Please be sure to reach out to us on social media or email. Let us know if you want access to our Discord community. And I did see one email, and I will immediately respond to it after this, uh, after this, after this presentation. Um, what other content you'd like to see? Any other feedback or comments or concerns you have, again, just shoot us an email or tag us on social media. We will be back again on February 9th at 7.30 p.m. for our February meeting. Uh, details on that are coming very shortly. Thank you all again so, so much. <laughs>